Now we are going to find out how to do a workflow development. In order to workflow development, you need to do proper research, okay, before you start in the workflow development. So I will just go back to the PowerPoint, okay. We are going to emphasize this point, identify the business object, okay. You might say, okay, identify a business object, what do you mean, okay. So imagine you are going to create a workflow for a purchase order because purchase order is a workflow that is most, mostly by every company. Okay, uh, other companies use different purchase orders, invoice. Everyone uses everyone uses workflow for different processes. Okay, so first thing that uh, generally a functional consultant or someone will ask you, okay, tell me, uh, I want to create a workflow for purchase order and it needs to be triggered. The next question, if he doesn't ask you to say, you know, uh, tell me what is the mm, transaction code you use for creating a purchase order. So you will say, oh, and he will say, oh, VA03 or for sales order, VA01 for sales order, ME21N for purchase order, and so on and so forth. Okay. So let me show you how you want, you will find a business object for a purchase order. Imagine I'm going to ME21N. Okay. And I'll do it for a bunch of purchase orders. Okay. Bunch of different transaction codes. Okay. So it's creating startup application, okay? So now if you see, you don't have to create any purchase order. What you have to do is you go here, you click on this. This is the button you have to use for any process, standard transaction will have this button always, okay? Most of the time. If you don't find, tell me no, because that would be probably rare because it would be a standard SAP box. Okay, so from here, what you are going to do is you are going to click on workflow. This is their own process and you will click on archive workflow. Now you might say this is disabled. Okay, this is disabled because there's no purchase order created. So what you have to do is we'll just click on a purchase order that we is created probably in the system. Okay, so let's see, we'll pick other documents and this is a purchase order that has already been created. Now what we are going to do is here, if we go to workflow, archive workflow, okay? And you click on this, okay? So it depends upon the system, it's slow. Here, this is my business object. And here also I know the object key, okay? So if you see the object key, is the purchase order number and the business object here, you get the object key. Now you might say, okay, so this is my object type. Now what we are going to do? Now we are going to see something for another transaction code. So they asked for sales order, VA03. And I'll show you a bunch, okay? Because this is very important. If you get this, this is pretty simple, okay? Uh, so I'm displaying a sales order and then I'll go probably one time in the BP transaction in S4, which is new, and I'll show it in the invoice. Will I miss something? Okay. If someone is not happy, I'll show the HR portion also. Okay. So here is the sales order. Okay. Let's see. If I click on this. Okay. I don't know whether this is for this system or not. Okay. Let me get another. This is for another system probably. So let me get a sales order number. VA03. Okay. We are in VA03. And now if I go here, I press enter. Okay, and some cases the for sales order that that service for object button is not enabled because there is something that you have to enable through SU three in the transaction port. You have to put some parameter ID. So if you see this is not enabled, I think there is something that you have to enable to get this let me see i think you go to su3 and here is the parameter and till the time it shows up slow okay let's go to another transaction so we did me23 and we did a03 uh, let's go, we'll go to FB03 okay, for invoice. 
and we'll probably do another uh, uh, we'll probably do another one uh, for uh, for uh, sales invoices sales order uh, for invoices sales order and uh, also we'll do for um, material invoice like not material the mm invoice okay let's see now we'll find document list and we'll just get a uh, invoice number okay let's see okay now let's see center company code it's mandatory i don't know whether you have a company code somewhere okay let's see probably you have some data here mm -hmm. It's being generated okay so this is these are the vendor number this is the document number okay so i double click again this button is there what is the process we click on this we go to workflow and we click on archive workflow and here is it it's bkpf okay simple okay now let me go to another transaction okay now bkpf is for some but for some it's fipp if it's marked invoice okay so now let's go to another process where i go to mir4 for mm invoice mm invoice is anything which has a purchase order or a purchasing document associated okay so i'll try to get the f4 not there. display documents so how can i do let's do a cheat sheet way to get this so what I can do, I go to SE16, okay, EKB table is my purchase order history table, and I here, go click here, and I click F4, and here I'll put uh, invoice receipt, if I click invoice receipt, uh, here, if you see, this is the document number, so what I can do is I can copy this and I go to MIR4 okay and I populate this number this was for this year or previous year or this was for 2016 so it will uh, or probably it may give me something no, it's not there so it will give me 2016 so now it will open up and probably I think it would be bus 2081. Let me see whether I remember really. Archived workflows and it's bus 2081. And here, if you notice the object key, the here it's the object key was this plus this, the year. Now, the before one, I think we didn't, we didn't notice properly. So we should check that one. FP03. Okay. Now, if I go here, this was this. And we'll see the object key changed different based on the different transactions. So here the word object key was, I think the the company code, then the document number, and then the fiscal year together. Okay. Now another transaction code I promised I'll show is BP, which is huge in S4 HANA. Okay. So that's why I want to show BP. So I click suppose start number. This is one and i double click on it okay and here it again shows up so uh now here if we go workflow and we'll click on archive workflow okay and here if you see this is the business object for uh for um, bp transaction now and this is the the document number is object key now the next one it would be what we are going to say now we go here uh, the next one will be PA 30 yeah uh, I just want to please all my business process person so that they are happy okay <coughs> so here I'll just look for per personal number okay and I'll just find some okay so let's find here something and here if you go here and we go to workflow archive workflow this is the business object type 
bus 1065. So it's pretty simple. So once you identify the business object, you're cruising, right? So now next, now next is looking for standard workflow templates. Let's go and find the standard workflow template. So in order to find a standard workflow template, we are going to go to SW01. Okay, this is the transaction. Okay, now here you can find workflow templates from here, bus two zero. So here what we can do is you can see business objects, BAPIs, and all those things. So here we can click on continue. Okay. So we'll find a longer way and we'll find a shorter way, whatever you want. Okay. So now this will this might take some time. Let me show you. Okay, here it comes. Okay, so here, so you have to understand where it falls. Okay, purchase order falls into materials management. Okay, so if you go here, materials management, and here you see purchasing. Okay. And here you'll see all the workflows that are associated with it. So passes to these are the different this is the different types of business objects it passes to. So mm -hmm. this is another way to find the, the business objects for based on the different uh, different modules. Okay. Now to find workflow, wait, let me see workflow. You cannot find from here there is this way okay so you can go here let me see object types probably all object types business objects organization not bad piece okay what we create so here we new bus 2012 is the business object now what you can do is always you click on this where is list and here you see task okay now the it will tell you the standard task that is available it doesn't tell so here it shows you see all these workflow templates are for business object okay bus two zero two two zero one two so these are the standard tasks these are the all the cost all the uh, standard workflow templates anything that starts with ts is standard task anything that starts with ws is workflow task as we workflow template as we said Workflow template is the main program and standard tasks are, are sub-modules in it, like actions that you take, okay? So, all these will fall into on one of this, okay? Ideally, okay? So, now if you see all these are changed here. Now, if I go, I'll click on one workflow, okay? The standard workflow, 20075, okay? Now, here if you see, these are the workflows that they have created okay the standard workflows uh, so here if you see this is the event release step created okay and now here you go to workflow builder okay so you you so we are still covering the portion where we are we found the standard workflow template now we are looking for standard task okay so we have we found the workflow template now the standard task you have to find it from here you can get it from there but it's a little this misleading and it's a little difficult so here if you see that this is the standard task for releasing or purchase order okay so if you see at the end of the day so we found the standard task we double click on it okay now here it will say single release so this is you might say what is that so if you double click the, in sap when you are stuck you start double clicking on stuff okay so it will take you somewhere okay now if you see it takes me to this business object which is different but uh, you can always use it so now if you click on this program uh if you click on the program portion is so what i did is let me go slowly a little uh, uh, I'll go back again uh, because I want to show you. Probably it will call by PP per ME release purchasing document here. You see, so let me go back again. So what I did is let me go slowly. Let me go slowly. So and I'll I'll discuss this more when we are starting the development because we're going to create a real workflow. Okay. So here, if you notice, this is the standard task 
we double click okay single release okay and here we double click and here if you see this is single release and here uh, we click on program okay and uh, here we get the code okay so this this is now this covers the portion of identifying the standard task standard method looking for a standard event so the event we saw so again we'll go back so the event before we saw from here i'll just go back so you can see it from here the standard event or you if you are inside this workflow template okay you can go from here go to basic data okay and here you can see start events click on start events and here you can see okay it's pretty simple now the second the, the fourth portion is creating a subtype of business object and if standard event is not there trigger plan your custom so this 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 covers the the examination portion the next portion i'll cover is more on the how to develop the workflow from scratch